five, four. Okay, this is the lecture on positive definite matrices. I made a start on those briefly in a previous lecture, and one point I wanted to make was the way that this topic brings the whole course together. Pivots, determinants, eigenvalues, and something new for po and stability, and then something new in this expression, x transpose ax. Actually, that's the guy to watch in this lecture. So, uh, so the topic is positive definite matrix, and what, what's my goal? First, first goal is, how can I tell if a matrix is positive definite? So I would like to have tests to see, if you give me a, a five by five matrix, how do I tell if it's positive definite? More important is, what does it mean? Why are we so interested in this property of positive definiteness? And then, at the end, comes some geometry. Ellipses are connected with positive definite things. Hyperbolas are not connected with positive definite things. So we, it's this, uh, we, there's a geometry too, but mostly it's linear algebra, and uh, this, this application of how do you recognize a, when you have a minimum is pretty neat. Okay, I'm going to begin with two by two. All matrices are symmetric, right? That's understood. The matrix is symmetric. Now my question is, is it positive definite? Now here are, here are some, e each one of these is a complete test for positive definiteness. If I know the eigenvalues, my test is, are they positive? Are they all positive? If I know the, these, so A is really, I, I look at that number A here as the, as the one by one determinant, and here's the two by two determinant. So the, it, this is the determinant test. This is the eigenvalue test. This is the determinant test. Are the determinants growing in, of all, of all n, sort of, could I call them leading submatrices? They're, they're, they're the first ones. They're the northwest Seattle submatrices coming down from, from there. They all, all those determinants have to be positive. And then another test is the pivots. The pivots of a two by two matrix are that number A for sure, and uh, since the product is the determinant, the second pivot must be the determinant divided by A. And then in here is going to come my favorite and my new idea, the, 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 the one to catch about X transpose AX being positive. But we'll have to look at this guy. This gets a, like a star because for most uh, presentations, the definition of positive definiteness would be this number four, and these numbers one, two, three would be tests for it. Okay, maybe I'll tuck this wire in a little bit. Okay, so I'll have to look at this X transpose AX. Can you? Uh, Can we just be sure, how do we know that the eigenvalue test and the, deter and the determinant test pick out the same matrices? And, and let me, uh, let's just do a few examples. So examples. Let me, let me pick the matrix two, uh, six, six. Tell me, what number do I have to put there? for the matrix to be positive definite. Tell me a sufficiently large number that would, would make it positive definite. Just, just let's just practice with these conditions in the two by two case. Now, when I ask you that, you don't want to find the eigenvalues. You would use the determinant test for that. So, so the first, or the pivot test, that, that guy is certainly positive. That had to happen. 
and it's okay. H how large a number here? The number had better be more than what? More than 18, right? Because if it's eight, no. More than what? 19, is it? What, what, if I have a 19 here, is that positive definite? Yeah, because the, I get 38 minus 36. That's okay. If I had an 18, let me play it really close. If I have an 18 there, then am I positive definite? Not quite. I would call this guy positive, so it's, it's useful just to see that this is the borderline. That matrix is on the borderline. I would call that matrix positive semi-definite. And, and what are the eigenvalues of that matrix? Just since we're good at eigenvalues of two by twos. Uh, when it's semi-definite, but not definite, then the, the I'm, I'm squeezing this eigenvalue test down. Tell me, what's the, what's the, what's the eigenvalue that I know this matrix has? What kind of a matrix have I got here? It's a singular matrix. One of its eigenvalues is zero. That has an eigenvalue zero, and the other eigenvalue is, from the trace, 20. Okay, so that, that matrix has eigenvalues greater than or equal to zero, and it's that equal to that brought this word semi-definite in. And the pi what are the pivots of that matrix? So the pivots, so the eigenvalues are 0 and 20. The pivots are, uh, well, the pivot is 2. And what's the next pivot? There isn't one. So we got a singular matrix here. It'll only have one pivot. You see that that's a rank 1 matrix. 2, 6 is a, 6, 18 is a multiple of 2, 6. Uh, the matrix is singular, it only has one pivot, so uh, the pivot test doesn't quite pass. The, let me do the X transpose AX. Now this is, this is the, this is the, uh, the, uh, the novelty now. Okay. What am I looking at when I look at, at this new combination X transpose AX? X is any vector now. So let me compute, so any vector, let me call its components x1 and x2. So that's x. And I put in here a. Let's, let's use this example, 2, 6, 6, 18. And here's x transpose, so x1, x2. We're back to real matrices after that last lecture that, that said what to do in the complex case. Let's come back to real matrices. So here's X transpose AX, and what I'm interested in is what do I get if I multiply those together? I get some function of X1 and X2, and what is it? Uh, let's see. If I do this multiplication, should I do it? Let me, I'll just do it slowly. X1, X2, if I multiply that matrix, this is 2x1 and 6x2s, and the next row is 6x1s and 18x2s, and now I do this final step, and what do I have? I've got 2x1 squareds. That 2x1 squareds is coming from this 2. I've got, this one gives me 18, well, shall I do the ones in the middle? How many, how many x1, x2s do I have? Let's see, x1 times that 6x2 will be 6 of them, and then x2 times this one will be 6 more, I get 12. So in, in here is going, this is, the, this is the number A, this is the number 2B, and in here is going to, the x2 times 18x2 will be 18x2 squared, and this is the number C. So it's A, X1, it's like AX squared, 2BXY, 
and cy squared. So my, my first point that I wanted to make by just doing out a multiplication is that as soon as you give me the matrix, as soon as you give me the matrix, I can, I, those are the numbers that appear in the, I'll call this thing a quadratic. It, you see, it's not linear anymore. Ax is linear, but now I've got an x transpose coming in. I'm up to degree two. Up to degree two, maybe qu quadratic is the usual word, a quadratic form. It's, it's purely degree two. There's no linear part, there's no constant part, there certainly aren't any cubes or fourth powers. It's all second degree. And my question is, is, it po is that quantity positive or not? That's my, it, for every x1 and x2, that is my new definition, that's my definition of a positive definite matrix. If this quantity is positive, if, 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 it's positive for all x's and y's, all x1, x2's, then I call them, then that's, the matrix is positive definite. Now, is this guy passing our test? Well, we had, we anticipated the answer here by, by asking first about eigenvalues and pivots, and what happened? It failed. It barely failed. If I had made this 18 down to a 7, it would have totally failed. If I, if I, if I, can I do that with the eraser and then I'll put back 18, because I'm, 7 is such a total disaster that if, that, well, let me, I'll, I'll keep 7 for a second. I, is that thing in any way positive definite? No, absolutely not. The, I, I don't know its eigenvalues, but I know for sure one of them is negative. Its pivots are 2, and then the next pivot would be the determinant over 2, and the determinant is, what, what's the determinant of this thing? 14 minus 36, so I've got a determinant of minus 22. The next pivot will be, the pivots now of this thing are 2 and minus 11 or something. Their product being minus 22, the determinant. This thing is not positive definite. What would be, what, let me look at the x transpose ax for this guy. What's, if I do out this multiplication, this 18 is temporarily changing to a 7. This 18 is temporarily changing to a 7. And I know that there's some numbers x1 and x2 for which that thing, that function is n negative and I'm desperately trying to think what they are. Can, maybe you can see. C can you tell me a value of x1 and x2 that makes this quantity negative? Oh, maybe 1 and minus 1? Yeah, that's a, that's a, in this case, that uh, will work, right. If I took x1 to be 1, and x2 to be minus 1, then I always get something positive, the 2 and the 7, minus 1 squares. But this would be minus 12 and the whole thing would be negative. I'd have 2 minus 12 plus 7, I'm negative. If I drew the graph, can I, can I get a little picture in here? If I draw the graph of this thing, so graphs of the function f of x, y, or f of x, shall I say, or f of x, y equal this, it's this, it's this x transpose ax, this, this, this ax squared, 2b x, y, and c, y squared. And let's take the example with these numbers. Okay, so here's the x axis. Here's the y-axis, and here's up is the function, z if you like, or f. 
I, I apologize. So let me just once in my life here put an arrow over these these axes so you see that that's the vector, and I just gave instead of x1 and x2, I made them x the components x and y. Okay, so so what's a graph of 2x squared, 12xy, and 7y squared? I'd like to see, so to get some idea, actually I'm not the greatest artist, but let's tell me something about this graph of this function. Uh, well, tell me one point it goes through. Uh, the artist, right? Even this artist can get this thing to go through the origin. At, at when these are zero, I, I certainly get zero. Okay, some more points. If x is one and y is zero, then I'm going upwards. So I'm going up this way. And I'm, I'm going up like 2x squared in that direction. So I, that's meant to be a, a parabola. And suppose x stays zero and y increases. Well, y could be positive or negative. It's seven y squared. Is this function going upward? In the x direction, it's going upward. And in the y direction, it's going upwards. And if x equals y in the 45 degree direction, it's certainly going upwards. Because then we'd have, what about, everything would be positive. But what? This function, what, what, What's the graph of this function <coughs> look like? Tell me, the, tell me the word that describes the graph of this function. This is the non-positive definite. You, everybody's with me here. I, for some reason, got started in a negative direction here, a case that isn't positive definite. And what's, what's the graph look like? It goes up, but does it, do we have a minimum here? Does it go up from the, from the origin? Completely? No, because we just checked that this thing failed. It failed along the direction when x was minus y. We have a saddle point. Let me, let me put myself, let me at least tell you the word. This thing goes up in some <coughs> directions, but down in other directions. And if we actually knew what a saddle looked like, I think saddles do that. Like, am I right? I, I mean, like the way your legs go, is like down, uh, and, and the way you, and looking like forward and, uh, uh, the, and drawing the thing is even worse than describing it. I'm just gonna say, in some directions we go up, and in other directions, there is um, a saddle. Now, I'm sorry I put that on the front board because I have no way to, to cover it. But it's a saddle. OK. And, and this is a saddle point. It's, the, it's a point that's at the maximum in some directions and at the minimum in other directions. And actually. The perfect directions to look are the eigenvector directions. We'll see that. So this is um, not a positive definite matrix. OK, now I'm coming back to this example. Getting rid of this 7, let's move it up to 20. Let's, let's, let's make the thing really positive definite. Okay, so this, is, this number is now 20. C is now 20. Okay, now that passes the test, which I haven't proved, of course. It passes the test for positive pivots. It passes the test for positive eigenvalues. How, how can you tell that the eigenvalues of that matrix are positive without actually finding them? Of course, Two by two, I could find them. But can you see, how do I know they're positive? I know that their product is, I know that lambda one times lambda two is positive. Why? 
because that's the determinant, right? Lambda 1 times lambda 2 is the determinant, which is 40 minus 36 is 4. So the determinant is 4. And the trace, the sum down the diagonal, is 22. So they multiply to give 4. So that leaves the possibility they're either both positive or both negative. But if they're both negative, the trace couldn't be 22, so they're both positive. So both of the eigenvalues there are positive, both of the pivots are positive, the, the determinants are positive, and I believe that this function is positive everywhere except at zero, zero, of course. When I write down this condition. I b so I believe that x transpose, let me copy, x transpose ax is positive, except, of course, at the minimum point at the zero vector. Of course, I don't expect miracles. So what does its graph look like? And how do I check, and how do I check that this really is positive? Can we take its graph for a minute? What would be the graph of that function? It does not have a saddle point. Let me, I'll raise the board here and stay with this example for a while. So I want to do the graph of, here's my function, 2x squared, 12xy's, that could be positive or negative, and 20y squared. But, my point is, so, I mean, you're seeing the underlying point is that the things are positive definite when, when in some way these, these pure squares, squares we know to be positive, and when those kind of overwhelm this guy, who could be positive or negative, because x and y could have same or different signs, when, the, when these are big enough, they overwhelm this guy and make the total thing positive. And what would the graph now look like? Let me draw the x, well, let me draw the x direction, the y direction, and the origin. At zero, zero, I'm there. Where do I go as I move away from the origin? Where do I go as I move away from the origin? I'm sure that I go up. The origin, the center point here, is a minimum, because this thing, I believe, and we better see why, it's, the graph is like a bowl. The graph is like a bowl shape. It's, 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 here's the minimum. And because we've got a pure quadratic, we know it sits at the origin, we know its tangent plane, the first derivatives are zero. So, so we, know, we know first derivatives, first derivatives are all zero. But that's not enough for a minimum. Its first derivatives were zero here. So the, the partial derivatives, the first derivatives are zero, again, because first derivatives are going to have an x or, an a y or a y in them, they'll be zero at the origin. It's the second derivatives that control everything. It's the second derivatives that this matrix is telling us. And somehow second, so here, here's my point. You remember in calculus, how did you decide on a minimum? first requirement was that the derivative had to be zero. But then you didn't know if you had a minimum or a maximum. To know that you had a minimum, you had to look at the second derivative. The second derivative had to be positive. The, 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 the slope had to be increasing as you went through the minimum point. The curvature had to go upwards. And that's what we're doing now in two dimensions and in n dimensions. So we're doing what we did in calculus. Second derivative positive n will now become 
that the matrix of second derivatives is positive definite. Can I just, so this is the, like the translation of, of, this is how minimum is coming in. In, 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 begin, in, in the beginning of calculus, the que, the, we had a minimum was associated with second derivative being positive and first derivative zero, of course. Derivative, first derivative, but it was the second derivative that told us we had a minimum. And now in 1806, in linear algebra, we'll have a minimum for our function now. Our function will have, be a function not of just x, but several variables, the way functions really are in real life. The minimum will be when the matrix of second derivatives, the matrix here was one by one. There was just one second derivative. Now we've got lots is positive definite. So positive for a number translates into positive definite for a matrix. And it just brings everything together. You check, you check pivots, you check determinants, you check eigenvalues, or you check this minimum stuff. OK, now let me come back to this graph. That graph goes upwards. And I have to see why. How do I know that this, that this function is always positive? Can you look at that and tell that it's always positive? Maybe two by two you could feel pretty sure, but the, what's the good way to show that this thing is always positive? If we can express it as in terms of squares, because that's what we know for any x and y, whatever, if we're squaring something, we certainly are not negative. So I believe that this expression, this function, could be written as a sum of squares. Can, can you tell me? It, see, because all the problems, uh, the headaches are coming from this x, y term. If we can get expressions, if we can get that inside a square. So actually, we're, what we're doing is something called, that you've seen called completing the square. Let me, let, me, let me start the square and you complete it. OK. I think we have 2 of x plus, now I don't know how many y's we need, but you'll figure it out, squared. How many y's should I put in here to make, what do I want to do? The 2 x squareds will be correct, right? What I want to do is put in the right number of y's to get the 12xy correct. And what is that number of y's? Let's see, I've got 2 times, so I really want 6xy's to come out of here. I think maybe if I put 3 there, does that look right to you? I have 2. This is, we can mentally s s multiply that out. That's x squared, that's right. That's 6xy times the 2 gives this one right. And how many y squareds have I now got? How many y squareds have I got from this term? 18. 18 was the key number, remember? Now, if I want to make it 20, then I've got 2 left, 2 y squareds. That's completed the square. And it's, uh, now I can see that, that that function is positive because it's, a, it's all squares. I've got two squares added together. I couldn't go negative. What if, what if I went back to that 7? If, if instead of 20, that number was a 7, then what would happen? This would still be correct. I'd still have this square. 
to get the 2x squared and the 12xy, and I'd have 18y squared, and then what would I do here? I'd have to remove 11 y squared, right? If I, if I only had a 7 here, then instead of, when I had a 20, I had two more to, to put in. When I had an 18, which was the marginal case, I had no more to put in. When I had a 7, which was the case below 0, the, the, the indefinite case, I had minus 11. Okay, now, so you, you can see now that this thing is a bowl. It's going upwards. Uh, if I cut it at, at a plane z equal to 1, say, I would get, uh, I would get a curve. What would be the equation for that curve? If I cut it at, at height 1, the equation would be this thing equal to 1. And that curve would be an ellipse. So actually, already I've brought into the, into the lecture the different pieces that we're aiming for. We're aiming for the tests, which this passed. We're aiming for the connection to a minimum, which this which we see in the, in the graph. And if we chop it at, if we set this thing equal to 1, if I set that thing equal to 1, that, what that gives me is the cross-section. It gives me this, this curve, and its equation is this thing equals 1, and that's an ellipse. Whereas if I cut through a saddle point, I'll get a hyperbola. Okay, but this, uh, this minimum stuff is, is really what I'm, I'm most interested in. Okay. Uh, but I, I just have to ask, do you recognize, I mean, these numbers here, the two that appeared outside, the three that appeared inside, the two that appeared there, actually, those numbers come from elimination. Completing the square is our good old method of Gaussian elimination in for, expressed in terms of these squares. The, the, uh, uh, let me show you what I mean. I, I, I just think those numbers are no accident. If I take my matrix, 2, 6, 6, and 20, and I do elimination, then the pivot is 2, and I take 3, oh, yeah, what's the multiplier? How much of row 1 do I take away from row 2? Three. So what you're seeing in this completing the square is the pivots outside and the multiplier inside. Should we just do that again? The, the pivot is two. Three of, three of those away from that gives me two, six, zero. And what's the second pivot? Three of this away from this. Three, six will be 18. And the second pivot will also be a two. So that's the, that's the U. This is the A. And of course, the L was 1, 0, 1, and the multiplier was 3. So completing the square is elimination. Why am I happy to see, uh, to see that coming together? because I know about elimination for n by n matrices. I've just started talking about completing the square here for two by twos. But now I see what's going on. Completing the square really amounts to splitting this thing into a sum of squares. So what's the critical thing? I have a lot of squares. And in, inside those squares are multipliers, but they're squares. And, and the question is, what's outside these squares? When I complete the square, what are the numbers that go outside? They're the pivots. They're the pivots. And that's why positive pivots give me sum of squares. Positive pivots 
Those pivots are the numbers that go outside the squares, so positive pivots, sum of squares, everything positive, graph goes up, a minimum at the origin. It's all connected together, all connected together. And in the two by two case, you can see those connections, but linear algebra now can go up to three by three, n by n, and let's do that next. Can I just, before I leave two by two, I've written this expression matrix of second derivatives. What's the matrix of second derivatives? It's, that's one second derivative now, but if I'm in, if I'm in two dimensions, I have a two by two matrix. It's the second x derivative. It's the second x derivative goes there. D, shall I write it? Yeah, I better use the, this is f, fxx, if you like, fxx. That means the second derivative of f in the x direction. Fyy, second derivative in the y direction. Those are the pure deriv second derivatives. They have to be positive for a minimum. This number has to be positive for a minimum. That number has to be positive for a minimum. But that's not enough. They, those numbers have to somehow be big enough to, to overcome this cross derivative. Why is the matrix symmetric? Because the second derivative of f with respect to x and y is equal to, I can, th that's the beautiful fact about second derivatives is I could do those in either order and I get the same thing. So this is the same as that. And uh, so uh, that's the matrix of second derivatives. And the test is it has to be positive definite. You might remember from, from uh, tucked in somewhere near the end of 1802, or at least in the book, was the condition for a minimum for a function of two variables. What's, when do you have a minimum for a function of two variables? And believe me, that's what calculus is for. The condition is first, derivatives have to be zero. And the matrix of second derivatives has to be positive definite. So you maybe remember there was an fxx times an fyy that had to be bigger than an fxy squared. That's just our determinant two by two. But now we now know the answer for three by three, n by n, because we can do elimination on n by n matrices. We can connect to eigenvalues of n by n matrices. We can do sum of squares, sum of n squares instead of only two squares. And so let's take a, uh, let me go over here to do a three by three example. So three by three example. Okay. Oh, let me make, let me use, hmm, shall I use my favorite matrix? You've seen this matrix before. Well, let me, uh, yeah, let me, yes, let's, let's use the good matrix. What the, why not? Let's, okay. Is that matrix positive definite? What's, so I'm going to ask questions about this matrix. Is it positive definite, first of all? What's the function associated with that matrix? What's the x transpose ax? Is, do, do we have a minimum for that function at zero? And then even what's the geometry? Okay. First of all, is the matrix positive definite? I've given you the numbers there, so you can take determinants. Maybe that's the quickest. Is that what you would do mentally? If, if I give you a matrix on a quiz and say, is it positive definite or not? I would take that determinant and I'd get the answer two. 
I would take that determinant and I would get the answer for that two by two determinant. I get the answer three. And anybody remember the answer for the three by three determinant? It was four. The, you remember for these special matrices, uh, when we did determinants, they went up two, three, four, five, six. They just went up linearly. So that matrix has the determinants are two, three, and four. Pivots. What are the pivots for that matrix? I'll tell you. They're, the first pivot is two. The next pivot is 3 over 2. The next pivot is 4 over 3. Because the product of the pivots has to give me those determinants. The product of these two pivots gives me that determinant. The product of all the pivots gives me that determinant. What are the eigenvalues? The eigenvalues, I've got, what do I have, a cubic equation, a degree three equation. There are three eigenvalues to find. If I believe what I've said today, what do I know about these eigenvalues? Even so, I don't know the exact numbers. I, I might actually, I, I, I think I remember the numbers because these matrices are so important that people figure them out. Uh, but what do, you, what do you believe to be true about these three eigenvalues? You believe that they are all positive. They're all positive. I think that they are 2 minus square root of 2, 2, and 2 plus the square root of 2. I think. Uh, let me just. I, I can't write those numbers down without checking the simple checks. What the first simple check is the trace. So if I add those numbers, I get 6. And if I add those numbers, I get 6. The other simple test is the determinant. If I, am I going to do this? Can you multiply those numbers together? I guess we can multiply by 2, OK. Uh, what's 2 minus square root of 2 times 2 plus square root of 2? That's, that'll be 4 minus 2. That'll be 2. Yeah, 2 times 2. That, that's got the determinant right. So it's got, a, it's got a chance of being correct, and I think it is. Now, what's the x transpose ax? I better give myself enough room for that. x transpose ax for this guy. It's 2 x1 squared and 2 x2 squares, and 2 x3 squares. Those, those come from the diagonal. Those were easy. Now, off the diagonal, there's a minus and a minus. They come together. There'll be minus 2, and, and minus 2 what? Are coming from this 1, 2, and 2, 1 position is, is the x1, x2. I'm, I'm doing mentally a multiplication of this matrix times a row vector on the left, times a column vector on the right. And I know that these numbers show up in the answer. The diagonal is the perfect squares. This off diagonal is a minus 2x1, x2. And there are no x1, x3s. And there are minus 2 x2, x3s. And I believe that that expression is always positive. I believe that that curve, that graph of, the, of this function, this is my function f, and I'm in more dimensions now than I can draw, it, it, but the graph of that function goes upwards. It's a bowl, or maybe the right word is, uh, is forgotten. Um, What's a long word for a bowl? Uh, hmm. Maybe paraboloid? I think paraboloid comes in. I'll, I'll edit the tape and get that word in. Bowl, that 
that's uh, is, uh, uh, that so that and if I complete, I could complete the squares. I could write that as a sum of three squares, and those three squares would get multiplied by the three pivots, and the pivots are all positive. So I would have positive pivots times squares. The net result would be a positive function and a bowl that goes upwards. And then finally, if I cut, if I slice through this bowl. If I, now I'm asking you to stretch your visualization here. Because I'm in four dimensions. I've got x1, x2, x3 in the base, and this function is z, or f, or something. And the, its graph is going up. But I'm in four dimensions, because I've got three in the base and then the upward direction. But now if I cut through this four-dimensional picture, at level one, so suppose I cut through this thing at height one. So I take all the points that are at height one. That gives me, it gave me an ellipse over there in that, in that uh, two by two case. In this case, this will be the equation of an ellipsoid. A football, in other words. Well, not quite a football, a lopsided football. What, what will be, can I, can I try to describe to you what the ellipsoid will look like? This ellipsoid. I'm sorry that, the, that I've ended the matrix right at the point. Let, let, me, let me be sure you see the, the equation. 2x1 squared, 2x2 squared. 2x3 squared minus 2 of the cross products equal 1. That is the equation of a, of a football. So what do I mean by a football or an ellipsoid? I mean that, well, I'll draw it here. It's like that. And like that. It's got a center. And it's got, um, it's got three principal directions, this, this ellipsoid. So, uh, you see what I'm saying? If we had a sphere, then all directions would be the same. If we had a true football, or it's closer to a rugby ball, really, because it's more curved than a football, it would be, it would have one long direction and the other two would be equal. That would be like having a matrix that had one eigenvalue repeated and then one other different. So the sphere comes from like the identity matrix, all eigenvalues the same. A uh, rugby ball comes from a case where uh, three, the three, two of the three eigenvalues are the same. But we now have a case where, the typical case, where the three eigenvalues are all different. So this will have, how do I say it? If I, if I look at this ellipsoid correctly, it'll have a major axis, it'll have a middle axis, and it'll have a minor axis. And those three axes will be in the direction of the eigenvectors. And the lengths of those axes will be determined by the eigenvalues. It, 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 I can get, turn this all into linear algebra, because we have the right, we, the right thing we know about eigenvectors and eigenvalues for that matrix is what? Uh, 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 let me just tell you the, repeat the main linear algebra point. How could we turn what I said into into, into algebra, we would write this A as Q, the eigenvector matrix, times lambda, the eigenvalue matrix, times Q transpose. The principal axis theorem, we'll call it now. The eigenvectors tell us the directions of the principal axes. The eigenvalues tell us the lengths of those axes. 
Actually, the lengths are, the half lengths are one over the eigenvalues, it turns out. And that is the matrix factorization, which is the, which is the most important matrix factorization in, in our eigenvalue material so far. That's diagonalization for a symmetric matrix, so instead of the inverse, I can write the transpose. Okay. I've, I've, so what I've tried today is to tell you the, what's going on with positive definite matrices. Uh, you see all how all these pieces are there, and linear algebra connects them. Okay. Um, see you on Friday.